Hey, welcome back to Zero to Fight Stick. Everybody likes to press buttons on an arcade stick, so I think we need to install some buttons. We're at that point. For this project, I went with the Gamerfinger HBFS G3s. Now you can use Sanwa, you can use Samitsu. I like these because you can customize them how you want. There's co different color plungers, there's different key switches you can use. It's really cool, I like it. Um, in the case of Sanwa Samitsu, Usually you don't have you'll have a plunger in you'll have a switch in it's pretty much just either you have a snap in which is this is not or you have a screw in which this is so you'll just have a ring you plug in the button from the base secure it with the ring and then you're good to go the gamer fingers take a little bit more work to get set up but that's okay because we want that custom job all right to get started what you're going to need first of all you want buttons. For this case, we want eight 30 millimeter buttons. We also want, and I've gone ahead and put some of the key switches in these, uh, eight 24 millimeter. Now, you may only need six, you may only need seven. Uh, in this case, we're going to have enough to use all eight. We need some keycaps. Some these, like I said, the Gamer Fingers come in all sorts of colors. That's the 30 millimeter. Here's a couple of the 24 millimeter and with these we need to have key switches I get mine from novel keys they're really cool now just a note if you like me ordered some switches from novel keys and they are marked as PCB mount you have to convert them and to do that you can use toenail clippers yes I mentioned earlier you might need toe cl nail clippers in this project uh, this is where they come in handy don't really need any other tools other than that to get going, so let's get started. First of all, let's show you how to build a switch. So you're going to start with the base housing. I went with the smoke gray, and these are screwing buttons, so you need that screwing ring. We're going to need a switch. So let's get that plugged in. And again, if you bought PCB mount switches, they're going to have little plastic pins, and you'll have four in total. Two are metal two are plastic. What you want to do is just take that toenail clipper and cut them off. I don't have them on right now. They're gone. Got rid of them. If you can order plate, what's called plate mount switches, that's where you really want to be because it just makes, you saves you a step or two or eight. You may want to file these down a little bit just to be sure um, if you don't get close enough with your toenail clippers. Don't worry, it's just plastic. Otherwise, you just want Cherry MX compatible switches with the configuration you want. And that can be, okay, is it clicky, tactile, which means when you press it, there's going to be a little bit of a stop there. You'll be able to feel it just a little bit. Uh, clicky makes a sound when you get to that depression point. Or linear, which you're not going to feel anything except when you hit the base. And that's just from hitting base. All right, what you want to do is inside here, this housing, you're going to see a few holes. There's a big round center hole, and the camera is not going to be able to pick this up. But there's also two tiny kind of flat holes, almost they're rectangular shaped. You want to line up the center pin and these other metal pins right in there. Once you do that, just give it a good push. You should feel a click, subtle click in there, and then you're set. All right, we're ready to go there. Now let's say I want to make this a nice red button on top. So there is a notch on this side, a notch on this side. I think earlier revisions of this had um, kind of snap in, but these do not. And there's also a cross shape on the inside, which matches up with the cross shape on top of the key. You just want to kind of marry these two together. If you notch, put these notches together, it'll work then just press it down firmly. Hey, we got buttons. All right. So all we have to do now, lift up the case a little bit, push this in. Now I like to line it up. So I'm looking at the logo. I want to face that right side up. And there we go. Last step, all you have to do you want to check the ring. There's a thicker edge on the end, and some buttons that are screw in, they have, but also these little this texture on the outside to give you a little bit more bite when you 
get up to the case. Just screw that in. You may need to hold it up from the other side once you tighten it. And there you go. You have a button. All you have to do is repeat it for each of these and then for the outside places where you're going to put buttons. And I'll show you what that looks like in a few. Alright, so we, now we've gotten our buttons in, including our nice top buttons and a couple side buttons. So just a few points. Now with you might have some FAQs or whatnot. First of all, can I use old school HAP style industrial Lorenzis buttons? And your answer is kinda. Those buttons are a little bit smaller, but they will fit these holes. I've tried it with the other stick. The only problem is once you mount the switch, it's really gonna bump up against the back panel. And I'm really kind of worried that would cause shorts. Um, so I don't recommend them. Even the, sh and we used the short stem here and it was still kind of dicey. So I don't recommend them. Long stem will definitely not fit, absolutely not. Another couple points. If you have trouble with the screw-ins, I believe there are some tools out there, layer shift might make them, uh, that will actually help you screw these in. If you're working with a different case that's really deep, you just can't reach them, what have you, uh, that is an option. A couple other things I just wanted to note. I tried to align the prongs here in a certain order, uh, just using the logo as a guide kind of point it that way. Uh, this helps out with the wiring a lot. You may also find that you tilt them a certain way, make them an arc or something like that, whatever works for you. Um, that will help you make your wiring a little bit cleaner, a little bit more sane. I wanna talk about, let's see how it looks. First, I wanna show you the option buttons. Uh, my idea is that L3, R3, touchpad, uh, select, start, and guide. The, on the side though, oops, the other side, uh, we're gonna have one button for mode. I'm gonna make a liar myself in future episodes, this will end up being turbo, I'm sure, and turbo button, uh, which you can also have a tournament lockout later, we'll describe that in a bit. Uh, in a future episode that will turn off these buttons and the side buttons. Now let's talk about front facing action buttons. Uh, yes, I went with the rainbow. You've got a little red. Uh, I'm going to nickname this stick Skittles, I guess, because you're, you're going to make people taste the rainbow. Uh, that said, look at those. They're nice. They're pretty quiet. And they're really responsive. I'm loving this so far. All right, so that's our buttons installed. We're not wiring them yet. We're gonna talk about repairing wiring in an upcoming episode. And we also need to fill this little guy here. That's going to be our joystick. So once we're ready for that, I'll see you in that episode and uh, good luck. Have fun with installing your buttons. Hey guys, just one little addition on the button video is we left a hole open and that's because I got three and three sides just for future expandability and just because I like balance, balance and all things and all that. Uh, this is a Sanwa 24 millimeter button cover. It's really easy to install. Just take that sucker, plunge it in, snap it, and we're set to go. You don't have a nice big gaping hole there anymore. Hey, awesome. There we go. We, we're set to go on this side. Hey, this is just some bonus content on if you have one of these IL HAP style old school buttons, how do I get the Cherry switch in or whatever switch you're using? So this is a Cherry ZF switch and you'll see, notice there are two kind of pins on this end and the easiest way is just notch the first pin into the hole in the bottom. Make sure this grounding tab is on the top and put it in there kind of slide it down and gently nudge the top fin 
and then it'll snap in and you know you're ready to go and we're connected. That's it. And if you want to remove it, all you do is just the opposite. Kind of nudge this pin. Oops. Come on, fingernails, do your job. Well, there we go. Nudge it out and push the cherry switch up and out. And there you go. Your switch is now removed. That's how you can replace your cherry switches. Hope that helped you.